Ahead on Early Birds, it's a battle for first place in the NFC South. You heard me right, first place on the line. We'll break down how the Falcons will try and make the Bucks walk the plank. Plus, shocks in the film room. We go one on one with one of the big bruisers in the middle of Atlanta's defense. And what is up with the dogs? That and so much more ahead on Early Birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds. Presented by Mercedes Benz. Oh, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. Falcons coming off back to back wins. Shock, maybe they'll add another two back on that. Oh, that'll be real nice. Should like be that. a good one this weekend. Let's start things off with the opening drive. We got the Falcons and the Bucks tomorrow right here on Fox 5. Good news, DJ. Uh, and some bad news on Atlanta's run game. Good news is the Falcons have the fourth best rushing attack in the league. Bad news, Cordero Patterson is now on IR. Knee injury out at least four games. So can they keep it up without CP? Just I think they can because I think this is a scheme that is made mm -hmm. to run the football. We've seen it in really four straight games being able to run the football. And I think it starts up front with those big guys. I think they're finding some cohesion. They're creating those rush lanes and they're playing physical, changing that line of scrimmage, and that's what it's all about. Then, of course, you got some bruisers back there as well running the rock, and last week we saw those two guys, actually three guys, were running the rock really hard. Yeah, and taking advantage of those rushing lanes, among those, Tyler Algier, Caleb Huntley, they say they're ready to pick up the slack. Really just, I think throughout the whole season, just getting myself ready, ready to, for whatever happens, because, you know, it's a long season. You know, anything anything happens, so, you know, just kind of make the most out of our opportunity and stuff. I just feel like everybody in our room got that mindset, want to be physical and, you know, punishing the uh, opposing team. Because um, if you do that, then you break their will, you break their will. That's how you win the game. Simple as that, just break their will. All right, like as we continue like on the opening drive, Okay, we got to talk about Tom Brady, Ooh. right? How about this stat? The Falcons are trying to hand Tom Brady his first three-game losing streak in 20 years. Man. Hasn't happened since 2002. Tons of receiving weapons. Julio. So, Shock, how do you handle this guy? I think the number one thing in stopping Tom Brady and the one thing that makes him really uncomfortable is push from the middle of the pocket. That's mm. when he becomes really normal and not seem like a superhuman winning all these games. But when you push from the middle of the pocket, he will throw it to you. You know he doesn't want to move. So, Taquan Graham, Grady Jerry, this is a big time ball game for you guys to really. And Grady knows a little bit about sacking. Our man Tom Brady did it a couple mm -hmm. times in the Super Bowl. So, hopefully he can do it again tomorrow. Yeah, believe it or not, Arthur Smith, younger than Tom Brady, says the GOAT doesn't even get enough credit. And I don't think Brady gets enough credit to sustain that level of success year after year. He said he, he's going to make the right play. So you make a mistake and you leave somebody uncovered, usually he finds them. Clearly he's got a lot of trust with Mike Evans, and I would do if I was a quarterback. And they got other vets in there, and they've mixed and matched. And as we wrap up the opening drive, still very early in the season, but DJ, what would it say for this team, even now, to win and be all alone in first place in the NFC South? Would be huge, because I think coming into the season, everybody said this is a two-win team. Well, guess what? They already got two wins right. and we only played four games. So it tells you, you have to play the games. Everybody talks about what can happen before the season starts, what it looks like on paper, but ultimately it comes down to what happens between those white lines. And this team believes that they have the players inside that building to get it done. And they've been showing the last few weeks. A lot more people will be believing if they can get a win tomorrow. Welcome into Early Birds alongside DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. And there will be a lot of eyes on Atlanta's quarterback as well this week. Marcus Mariota, seven completions last week, though as the Falcons will point out, in a win. Yeah, no doubt. You didn't need him to be that efficient in the past game. Obviously, you want him to be, right. but I think coming into the future, you would need Marcus Mario to make some throws with his arm. Well, shock, yo-ho, yo-ho, it's a film room life for me. <laughs> He's getting worse yeah. week by week, or better. Depends <laughs> how you look at it. Uh, go warm up this illustrator. Right. We will see you in just yeah. a few. But first, one of the key offseason signings for the Falcons might end up being a new big guy who's been patrolling the middle of the field. With all that youth on that side of the ball, Rashawn Evans is a veteran leader and also the Falcons leader in tackles through the first four games. Kelly Price went one on one with the linebacker and former first round pick out of Alabama. Going back to kind of your background in Alabama, kind of the country boy upbringing, how did that kind of shape your work ethic, your the player that you are and the person that you kind of are now? I would just say, yeah, it kind of taught me you got to work for everything at that point. Um, you know, just me being and doing the country stuff, you know, cleaning out stalls, you know, uh, I would say just being around an environment where there's a lot of animals, um, love animals. So I would say just that just made me kind of love, you know, 
what it feels like not to have a lot of materialistic things, but just love being who you are and loving, you know, the things that are, that are going on, going on around you. So I say that. So I was reading that you used to chase horses to train and become faster. Tell me more about that. Well, my brother put me on because he used to run track. So down in the country, you know, we know him for riding horses and. Um, I remember one time he was doing it one time. I guess he was just being funny, but I saw it as like, you know, a workout tactic. So I was like, let me go out here and try it out. Um, he was the only person that actually caught one. But um, I, try, I almost got close one time, but my brother at the time, he was, he was a lot faster than me because he was running track, but he was able to do it. So I started doing it maybe a couple of years, but then eventually once I got to the league, I was like, in my country, I can't do it no more. <laughs> if I get hurt, I'm not going to get none of that money. <laughs> so, you know, on this defense, you guys are, have been super physical this year. I think from the outside looking mm -hmm. in, not a lot of people maybe expected that from this group, especially what they did last year. Mm -hmm. How much you guys pride yourself on that physicality on defense? I think now it's become my identity. So, you know, it's expected expect amongst a lot of guys, um, you know, and when you don't see it on film, you know, the coaches don't have to say anything about it. The players are able to. So when you got that, you know, that's always a good thing. What's it like for you being a part of this kind of building that you guys are, you have so many young guys on this team, kind of the next chapter of this kind of franchise? Um, I think it's just a new refreshing type team at this point. Um, guys are young. Guys got a lot to look forward to. Um, even though it's a new team, we don't feel like we're re rebuilding. I feel like we just, you know, we've kind of accepted the fact that people don't see us as, as a good team and that, you know, we're kind of like the underdogs. So we love that challenge and, you know, we've been trying to play and approach it like that each and every week. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. Last week, the Falcons rushed to the tune of 200 yards against the Cleveland Browns, and it's because of the really good run game, but also because of what the big boys do up front. Now, I'll show you what this is looking like to this defense. The Falcons run a lot of outside zone. So the outside zone goes this way. They want the line, everybody going at this angle. They ran really well against the Browns in this, what we call outside zone. But what the Falcons are gonna do is, they're gonna fake like they're going this way and run a counter back this way. They're gonna leave this defensive end unblocked. Drew Dahlman's gonna come around and kick him out, but everything looks like outside zone. So all these guys are gonna be going downhill, and then you come back with the counter, and it creates the perfect design and play for the Falcon. Let's get this thing started, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here it is, everybody's going at an angle. Everybody's going this way. Look, everybody's going this way, this way, this way. But here's the guy I want you to watch. He's gonna get here and get him square. Once he gets square, now he gives A.B. Williams a two-way go. He can go this way, or he can go outside. This is a great example of Dalma doing a great job of squaring the defender up and then giving the back a two-way go. And let's clear it and let's finish how this play ends up and boom, look at that. Now he's got a two-way go. Look, he can go inside, outside. Now it's a huge run and a nice job by this offensive line blocking, but Drew Dalma at the point of attack being really good and this results in Avery Williams having a huge run. He will be a big part of the run game as no CP. Look forward to having him a part of this, Justin, and he will be an excellent part with that speed. Yeah, big chance for those young running backs. Shock, thank you very much. We've got more to come on early birds, including what's going on with the dogs? Georgia got a scare last weekend against Missouri. Michael Jenkins and I discussed, was it a fluke or maybe something more? Plus, you want them to react to you, but also you may have to react to them. Like that's just being the, that's the patient part that I'm talking about. Putting receivers in a jam. There's more to play in corner than just deflecting passes and getting picks. AJ Terrell takes us going deep. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Early Birds is presented by Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. 
Welcome back into Early Birds. We welcome in former Falcons wide receiver Michael Jenkins. All right, let's start it off big college football day. We'll give your Buckeyes some love. Yeah, my uh, Buckeyes are always looking good right now, so they're, they're playing very well right now. CJ Stroud, 18 touchdowns, two picks, still your Heisman favorite, I'm sure, right? Of course, he's no. going to win it. All right, well, I'm just giving it to CJ Stroud <laughs> right now. All right, let's get back to business. Uh, enough of the Big Ten. Let's talk Georgia. What's up with Georgia? What's going on? Well, we saw last week they're hosting yeah. Auburn today. They needed every single minute to beat Missouri, came right down to the end. So that's two weeks in a row where it, it, it wasn't perfect. Perfect. No. What did you see? I think this is a game Kirby actually wanted to see his team go through mm -hmm. on the road, SEC opponent, and not playing their best, but just having that grit, that determination, that will to win, come back, and show that resolve to win on the road in the SEC. Yeah, they got the resolve. They went through the adversity. We know how coaches like to see their team go through that. Here's what Kirby Smart had to say. I don't look at it as that you're in a hitting slump or some kind of funk or anything like that because a lot of that's predicated off what the other team does uh, and what we do. We're a team, you know, like last year's team, they would have played in that a bunch of times. So there's a lot of youth there, but to be honest with you, it was a great opportunity to see what we're about because I don't know that you could find any greater adversity than be down 10 points in the fourth quarter, resiliency, all those things. Um, but we got to make sure that, that we do a good job building on that. All right, meanwhile, uh, while my Gators may have faded just a Ooh, touch in yeah. the SEC East, Sorry. I appreciate it. Uh, maybe another challenger looming for the dogs. Should we be taking Tennessee a little more seriously in the SEC? I think so. Obviously, they beat. I'm sorry, your Gators. Cool. Um, but they've been <laughs> playing well. Obviously, Hendon Hooker is a, is a Heisman candidate yeah. right now. He's playing at a high clip. And if they can beat LSU on the road and then play Alabama and at least play them tough, yeah. I mean, you definitely have to consider Tennessee as a, a, a long shot. Yeah, what do you like about their quarterback, Hendon Hooker? I mean, this guy can do it all. I mean, he can use his legs, he's accurate with the football, and he just continues to make plays and gives his, chance to, his team a chance to win. Exciting player, big mm -hmm. test for the Vols today at LSU. And let's give some props to Georgia Tech, right? Hosting yeah. Duke today, and they scored an upset last weekend. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody. They win at <laughs> Pittsburgh, right? Nobody was calling for that. What did you see in that game, again, after a coaching change. Yeah, I mean, big coaching change. Coach Key takes over as an interim guy. He's a Georgia Tech guy, right. alum. Uh, but I think the rain obviously helped him a little bit. But yep. Coach Key's an offensive line guy, was able to run the ball, establish the time of possession, and get a big win on the road at Pitt. Now they can win two in a row, taking on Duke. Yeah, it's a winnable game, certainly. And you mentioned Coach Key. Here's what he said this week. Consecutive wins, things like that. I mean, you know, success is the enemy of it. More, more people, well, they say more people die climbing, you know, going down Mount Everest than actually climbing up Mount Everest. So, you know, when you start looking at what you've done in the past, right, you, you're, 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 you're going to fall. So, you know, putting things together, you know, stacking games and wins, I mean, that, that's all kind of bogus to us and, and, and our kids in the room. All right, so you think the Jackets can turn around their season? They got a good chance to make uh, okay, some things okay. happen. I don't know if I turn around, but they I'll got a good it. chance to make some things happen this year. All right, taking on Duke today. And Shock, we'll send it over to you. We know you're heading to Athens uh, for the Deep South's oldest rivalry. You feeling all right? I'm feeling great. <laughs> about last. I'm all good. I mean, they play at 3.30, so we got time. Appreciate it, guys. All right, when it comes to playing cornerback, there's a little more to it than just deflecting passes that come to work. Let's just see the end of the process, according to A.J. Terrell. He says it all starts when the ball is snapped. He shows us how to jam a receiver in this week's Going Deep. One, you gotta come up, you gotta have a game plan uh, approaching a receiver by, you know, watching film or whatever. Uh, just having a mind, game plan on knowing what's, what his strengths and weaknesses are. When you get down in the position with him, you just gotta know your game plan, like I said, and then also just being patient at the line, not falling for all of the fake moves that they give you to give a release, because at the end of the day, they trying to replace where you are. So being patient and understanding your strengths and weaknesses and not panicking, just playing relaxed and under control. I'm glad you said like not, not falling for all that stuff, sir. You kind of reacting to what they do or are you trying to initiate it and, and kind of dictate the action? Yeah, that's the beauty of the game. Uh, you draw, you want them to react to you, but also you may have to react to them. Like that's just being the, that's the patient part that I'm talking about. You just gotta just have a mindset, a dominant mindset knowing that you're gonna win at the line. I just, I feel like the route is, is won at the line. The release, you know, putting hands on or sometimes you may not want to put hands on. You know, some people come up there with a with a game plan of not putting hands on because a receiver may be handsy at the line. You may give him a little fate, you know, just playing tick for tack. 
AJ Terrell going to have his hands full against the Bucks. More to come on early birds. Falcons got the win against the Browns. And it was good to see one of our former High Five Sports stars back in the Benz. We'll check in with some folks from Nick Chubb's alma mater ahead on Early Birds. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Welcome back into Early Birds. Well, Sundays usually mean long afternoons for football players and coaches, but of course, they're not the only ones putting in long hours. The Falcons medical staff are right there with them at the stadium, making sure everything is ready to go for a safe game day. Dr. Kyle Hammond takes you behind the scenes in this week's Emory Road to Recovery. You know, so if we're gonna kick off on a typical Sunday at 1 p.m., we're gonna, I'm gonna get here by 10 a.m. The training staff has been here long before that, setting up, preparing, and then the players are usually, some guys like to get here really early, some guys, they don't need as much preparation time or whatever their routine is, but, you know, 10 a.m. is kind of a general time mark that where most of us or the majority of people are in this, in this place and getting here, so three hours before the uh, game. And then, you know, the games are ending around 4, 4.30, and we're typically leaving the stadium myself around 6. You know, we're, we're calling players that night to check in on them. Uh, we're preparing for the following day, um, what we're going to do the following day to assess those players who might have dealt with an injury during the game. We're getting MRIs set up for this next day. Um, we're getting exams by myself to see me the next day. We're starting to maybe talk to agents, family, etc. after the game about that player who may have been injured. So the day in itself is, is long. Uh, we do a lot of work. I'm um, you know, blessed to have such a great staff working with me that helps me with all these things. So the majority of the day is, is spent here for a lot of people and, and they're really working hard and they do an amazing job. All right, thanks, Doc. He's a former dog and hometown hero for his high school. We're here what it's like to watch a Cedartown great in action. That's next on Early Birds. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Well, he's a guy we've been following here at Fox 5 since his <laughs> Friday nights at Cedartown. Of course, UGA and know plenty of folks were excited to see Nick Chubb back at the Benz last weekend. Of course, Falcons taking on his Browns, DJ, and yep. got some video of the group from Cedartown in the stands. And DJ, yeah. I know I know he's a guy you know well. And hey, the, the fans there, people are rooting for the Falcons, but they can root for Nick a little bit too. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, obviously you're torn a little bit as, hey, you want to root for your Falcons, but also you got a hometown guy, so you always got to give those guys a lot of love when they come you want them to succeed, but you want the team to lose. Kind of how it went down, you know? Right. So. <laughs> yeah, so they got a pretty good day. Nick Chubb had a great day. I mean, he's still got all kinds of records at Cedartown. He still trains there in the offseason. Quite a thrill for members of the team who got to watch Nick and the Browns here last weekend. Yeah, I think it's special to be able to bring these guys here and, and let them see him and see somebody that works out with them and came from the same place that, that they come and, and see them on this stage. It means a lot to me. I get to come out here and watch them and learn from them and stuff. So it means a lot to, for them to do this for us and everybody else. I think it brings good bonding to the team and watching somebody that grew up in Cedar Town and played at Cedar Town High School is, is for four years. Watch them out here and play. I think it means a lot. All right, very cool stuff there. So Falcons and Bucks tomorrow here on Fox 5. Make sure to join us for the Dirty Bird Report tomorrow night. Highlights, interviews, and so much more tomorrow night, 11.30 p.m. Make sure to join us. And Shock, before we let you go, I know a lot of folks still talk about the quarterback situation. Marcus Mariota, we hit it at the top of the show, but what do you want to see out of him in addition to, obviously, whatever it takes to win? Yeah, you know what? I, I think Marcus has played decent football. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of people want the stats. They want the numbers to look good. But he's done a lot of things at the line of scrimmage. He's created plays. He's improvised on the outside, used his legs. There are a lot of things in the run game that he helps because he's able to get outside the pocket. So I think Mariota's done a good job. I know everybody wants to see the numbers improve. But I just want to see him more consistent in the pass game. And I think we'll be good. Really quick, one more player to watch in this game. Oh, that's a good call. <laughs> I still want to see. I want to see a guy like Cordell Hodge make a big play. Okay. Game. Haven't seen him. Big, big part of the offense. Let's see him make a big play in this game. Passing game in the spotlight. That's it for us here on Early Birds. For our quarterback, DJ Shockley, I'm Justin Felder. Thanks for joining us. Have a good morning and a great weekend.